Hi everyone. Welcome back. Today, we will talk about Anchorage. Okay guys, now we'll talk about various definitions given by different authors, scientists. First, in 1923, Louis Otofi described Anchorage as a base, as a base against which orthodontic force or reaction of orthodontic force is applied. Now, the next scientist said and encourage as a resistance to unwanted tooth movement. Now, for example, if we want to retract our incisors, but we also have an reaction on our molars. So, this unwanted movement is to prevent this unwanted movements, the measures taken are considered as anchorage. Then Graeber. Graeber, uh, Graeber has defined anchorage in orthodontics as nature and degree of resistance to displacement offered by anatomical unit when used for purpose of effecting tooth movement. So to better understand these definitions, Let's talk about Newton's third law of motion, which states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. An active member and a reactive member. For example, if we are trying to retract incisors, so this will be our active member while the anchor, the base which we will be using is the reactive member. The definition states that an anchorage is a resistance to unwanted tooth movement. So, my wanted movement is retraction of incisors, while the reactive movement will cause molar to tip nasally. This is my unwanted tooth movement which I do not want. So, the, the methods that we take to stop this mesial movement is known as anchorage. So, for example, transpalatal arch is used for anchorage. Transpalatal arch will provide a distal force to the molar. So, this force will prevent the molar to tip mesially, which will be our unwanted movement. And hence, this will resist the unwanted tooth movement that is known as anchorage. Now, in the same diagram, we'll talk about anchorage loss. So, these are the methods to prevent molar to move mesially. But in cases, the molar will still move. So, this unwanted movement that the molar moves mesially will be my anchorage loss. This is my anchor loss. We will study anchor loss in all the three directions. Our anterior-posterior direction, vertical direction and transverse direction so first is anterior posterior which could be mesial or generally it is mesial mesial anchor loss so in this case we can see that for incisor retractions during space closure as we retract the incisors there is a mesial movement on the molar this is anchor loss and this anchor loss is in anterior posterior direction next our anchor loss is in vertical and transverse directions we know that uh, there are we have to consider all the three directions so the vertical direction will be that during retraction there is also extrusion of molar so extrusion of molar will be considered in the vertical direction and also there is a palatal movement palatal movement of the molar which will be considered in a transverse anchor loss so anchorage for fixed appliances it could be intraoral or extraoral in intraoral our anchor the anchor is teeth here we'll discuss about the root surface area more the root surface area more will be the anchorage provided by involving more teeth, by involving more the number of teeth, we'll get more anchorage. Hence, these are these will be our anchor teeth, and this is the segment that we want to move. 
Now extra oral encourage is provided by headgear and face mask. Headgear is the extra oral encourage source. It provides distal movement on the posterior segment. Okay, next we'll talk about the differences between stationary and reciprocal encourage. Stationary encourage. Any object which does not move is our stationary object. So, according to that, stationary encourage will be anything that does not move on force application. So, we can see that when we retract our interiors, as we are retracting our interiors, a counter movement is, a counter force is applied on the posterior teeth, causing movement of molar. As now we know that the molar has moved, so this cannot be considered a stationary encourage. The best example for stationary encourage will be our headgear. The best example for stationary encourage is headgear, which is our extra oral encourage. Now, what is reciprocal encourage? Reciprocal. Reciprocal will be opposite direction. So, as in cases of midline diastema, we want closure of spaces. We want the central incisors to close the space. Here, each central incisor is using encourage from the other central incisor. This one is getting encourage from this incisor causing this movement while this central incisor will use this central incisor a right central incisor as a reciprocal encourage to move measly hence closing the midline diastema so this will be our reciprocal encourage